Welcome to Kung Fu Havoc Live. For those on Facebook, it's live. For those who will be watching later, it was filmed doing the real. Anyway, because that's one of my favorite shows. It helps me learn about women. Uh, so this morning I had a rude awakening. As y'all know, last night, um, well, yesterday evening, Bill Cosby was found guilty. Being that Bill Cosby was found guilty, um, accusations have popped up on Tom Brokaw now for NBC. And the first thing I thought to myself was, not Tom Brokaw, you know, because you have so many different um, good things that Tom Brokaw has re reported, and then they threw Matt Lauer and Ann Curry in the mix and what she had to say about how she was harassed and how she told people to watch after certain people. I don't have the full detail. You want the full detail, you go to NBC. I don't work for them. I'm probably never going to get a job for them, but I do work for me. And so for Kung Fu Havoc, you know, I want to talk to y'all about this shit because um, in no way, shape, or form am I really against the Me Too movement. But again, it's also a double-edged sword because decent men can't approach decent women without the fear of us being in the shoes that Tom Brokaw is about to be in. Or, heaven forbid, if you're stupid enough to do the shit that Bill Cosby did and be stuck in that position. And, you know, everybody's probably thinking, okay, well, why are you bringing this up, James? All right. First was Harvey Weinstein. Rose McGowan launched a massive seek-and-destroy missile on his ass, and so far, it's been working out. Then it became Matt Lau, and then it became so many other people. But it actually goes further back than that, because at, at first, before it was even Harvey, Megyn Kelly was going through some shit. So you, you, you see why I'm bringing this shit up? And then for the Tom Brokaw to be brought up, and I'm like, man, I've watched Tom Brokaw for, for most of my young life, you know, and I'm only 44, and I never expected to not see Tom Brokaw on NBC, but everybody retires eventually. But now these things are coming out of woodwork. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't want to sound like a hypocrite. I don't want to sound like a sexist or an asshole. We all know that I am actually already an asshole, so I don't need no help in that. But I know that fear keeps women from coming forth. And I know that Bill Cosby's life is pretty much destroyed right now. And you know the man's pushing 80 years old if he's not 80 already. I don't really know. I don't really care. You know, I know that breaking into this independent business of filming hasn't been the best for me. And that's why I always make sure I take care of everybody's safety. Not, not that that's the topic. The, the simple topic is how do we, as decent men, approach young women without crossing boundaries? I'm scared to hug a female co-worker. I kid you not. I'm, I, hell, truth be told, I'm scared to shake their hands now because I don't want to be, let's say my career takes off tomorrow, and then that person that I hugged or shook hands come back in five years after my career, like, reaches its peak, and I'd be like, okay, now I don't have to work because, you know, I'm comfortable. I got movie offers coming and shit like that, and then this person pops out of the blue. Remember that time when you gave me this hug and you felt me up? Now, may I have, may have, may have never groped her, but that's all it takes. So, where do we draw the line? What is the sexual boundaries that men should not be doing in the first place? And you know, it's getting to the point where even if the woman is advancing to you, it's still seems like it's bad for you. You know, so what do we do? I mean, as a man, as a straight man, I love women. I did a video about women and leggings in, in the Me Too movement and how, you know, you don't want us looking at you, yet you don't wear clothes that we would, like, pass by. Because if we were in form-fitting clothes, I'm sorry, I'm a man, I'm honest, I'm going to look. Even if I have a girlfriend, I'm still going to look at another woman. It's just what we do. It's nature. You know, so where do we go from there? And now we got one of the top billing guys that did news being on the hook now as well. And uh, Tom Brokoff. I'm like, really? How the, what the fuck? You know? And then let's say they've been through so many, and it's not just NBC. It's other places too. And I'm like... These guys are making it bad for me. You know, I'm single. I'm not married. I don't look like I'm ever going to get married at this rate because you can't talk to women without fearing that you're fucking up. And I mean, you guys might not agree with that, but honestly, there are a lot of beautiful women. A lot of them. Some of them single. Some of them lonely like me. 
But how can I approach them without worrying about, oh, well, here comes the Me Too movement. Now, I'm fucked because I just said hello. I don't speak to barely any of my female classmates due to the fear. And I got a lot of pretty female girls in my class that I just left. Some in particularly more than others. But am I going to talk to them? It's not because they're in their 20s and I'm in my 40s. It's just because of I'm scared I'm going to fuck something up. And somewhere along the line, it's going to come back to bite me in the ass. I make independent films. You guys have no idea who the hell I am. I have 37 followers on YouTube. And that's pretty much it. They know who I am. They know I give things that I don't want to be doing. I'd much rather be doing Kung Fu. But you you got to have something special. And YouTube is not a guaranteed shot at fame. I apparently am not special. I only have 37 followers. And which I am grateful for. But, you know, I started making movies so that I could teach Kung Fu for free. Clearly, that was an epic fail. And now, you know, with everything that's gone wrong with harassment and how do you talk to a woman without harassing her? And if you say hi, how do you know she's not going to turn around and say that you were harassing her? It's a double-edged sword because there are a bunch of good guys out here. Now, I'm not going to say I'm a saint. Not by far, because I just admitted that if you're walking around in leggings or yoga pants and I happen to be passing through, you better believe I'm going to look. I'm not going to speak, but I'm going to look. I'm damn sure going to look. Hell, I might look twice. Fuck it. I will look twice. But the thing is, I'm not out to harass her. I'm just there to enjoy the view. But at the same time, you know, if she's single... And I want to speak to her. I can't. Just because of the fact that I don't want to get charged for harassment. Let's say tomorrow. For the sake of argument. Let's say that somehow God finally just stopped using me as his little joke. And decided, hey, I'm going to make James one of the best actors. He's going to get every role he goes for. He's going to never have to worry about not working anymore. And he's going to be successful. Let's say that happens. Long come hot lady in the yoga pants that I said hi to, and then my career goes. <laughs> I've had five years in, and now I can't get work because of saying hi. So, where do we draw the lines? Are women overreacting? Are men not reacting enough? Or are we both all in one big ass clusterfuck waiting for the explosion to happen so that we won't have each other in our lives? Like, I ain't trying to look at no dude no yoga pants. Alright? Let's keep that shit real. I love women. I love women in yoga pants. But I have to use this brain instead of the brain downstairs. Which I generally do. Which is another reason why I don't speak to them. Because of the Me Too movement. I'm scared that if I say hi, my ass is gonna die. Now, I do martial arts. And I have a specific way of when I was capable of using my legs as well as my hands of teaching certain people certain things. When you teach a woman, it is not the means of using that as a means of flirting. I'm using that as a means of teaching her how to beat up a man. All right? Simple as that. So there are certain parts of her body that I'm not going to touch, and she's just got to figure that part out with that motion. And why is that? Because I don't want to teach a woman who's not comfortable with me touching her arms or her legs. So if I can't touch her arms or her legs to demonstrate how I'm supposed to teach her how to break an arm or a leg, it kind of puts a damper on teaching. Which goes back to, if I'm touching her and trying to teach her, I'm scared to meet two movement, or she's going to take that as harassment, or he just used that as a way to touch my body. No. So what do you do? Are we in this big of a clusterfuck? I can't be the only dude feeling this shit. No, because there's a lot of hot chicks around. And I don't know if they're riding the wave of he harassed me, or if the shit really happened. But there are also a lot of rape victims that don't come forward. So let's take two minutes to talk about that. There's a few reasons why rape victims really don't come forward, and the main reason is fear or judgment. Because if you're a little loose, and please don't take that the wrong way, but if you're a lady and you're a little loose, you know, you got a reputation for getting around or whatever, I don't want to call a lady out of her name. But if you're one of those ladies that just like to have a lot of sex and then something happens and it gets back around and the attorney or somebody comes after you, that shit just happen. Which is why a lot of ladies who have a good time with sex don't come forward when they've been raped. 
because of their reputation. But that does not mean they have not been raped. It just means they have a really bad reputation. And one thing about a reputation is it's very hard to clean that thing up. You know, which is why I'm always honest. You know, if you already know what I'm about, I got a better chance of you not coming back to kick me in the ass where if I pretend that I'm something I'm not. You know, then I got a bigger chance of you coming back to blow my fucking ass out of the water. I don't have time for that. I'm sorry for swearing, but this is the way the world works. At the point when I woke up this morning and found out that now they're trying to get Tom Brokaw, I'm like, well, damn. And I thought to myself, why are all these ladies waiting so long? Then I remembered something. A lot of rape victims, because I've done my research, a lot of rape victims will straight up tell you, it's fear. Because most places tend to favor the man over the woman, depending on who that fucker is. So when you look at it that way, you're like, okay, that kind of makes sense. But at that same time, you can't live in fear because then you allow him to do it to someone else. Flipping that script, that shit happens to men too. And men don't really per se, get raped by chicks. Right? They might get harassed by some dudes, and there are some men who are loyal to their wives and get harassed on their job. They can tell their wife about it, but she might jump to conclusions and say, you wanted that shit to happen. And that has happened. I know people who have had that shit, and they're like, yeah, you know, I got a wife. If I tell her what's going on at work, she's gonna side against me than with me. And see, this is why things go wrong, because no one wants to express or tell the fucking truth, or when... You're a person who's lied all the time, and then you finally decide to tell the truth. No one wants to believe you. You know, the boy to cry wolf syndrome. I'm pretty sure everyone here has read that. And if you're like 14 and you haven't read it, then they're not teaching you to read it in kindergarten. Then maybe you ought to go back and look at that damn book. But at the same time, you know, even liars will tell the truth at least once. At least once. So, what do we do? Where do we go? We have to stop the cycle. One, there should be sensitivity classes and sexual harassment meetings and shit like that on every fucking job. Because that prevents the problem. And most jobs, I might be wrong. I'm usually not. But most jobs have a fraternization rule. Most people break that fucking rule. But most jobs have a fraternization rule. And, and we're all human, so fraternization is probably going to happen even if there are rules in place. But if the fraternization rules are broken or bent then there should be maybe small consequences. Transfer both of them to different stores so they can still have a relationship and still work for the company because they might be very good workers. But, you know, you have to keep your home life at home and your working relationship at work. And a lot of people can't do that, especially if they don't know how to be mature about this shit. We fighting at work, we fighting at home, we both going to be fine and homeless if we ain't careful. And a lot of people don't view shit like that. So you have to. You have to know where to draw the fucking line. I'm hoping, as I close this out, I'm hoping like hell that Tom Brokoff didn't do the shit that I heard this morning. But in case he did, come on, Tom. Damn, Bill Cosby already done got my fucking hopes and dreams busted up because he was like one of the black people that we inspired to be like. And yeah, I might be mixed, but my birth certificate says black, so I'm going to be black, and especially today. You know, we need to find a silver lining in all of this so that they can stop. And again, that fraternization rule should probably be enforced on most jobs. It probably isn't because one way or another, if you're going to hook up with somebody, whether you met them through the job or met them working at the Burger King drive through if it's meant for y'all to do the nasty, y'all going to find a way to do the nasty. It's just that damn simple. I couldn't put that any other way. I would have went black and started using the F-bomb, but I tried to be polite, especially on the live side of this. But, you know, to tell you the truth, we got to find a silver lining. I miss being able to actually say hi to women without the fear of them saying that I am harassing them. On that note, I'm James Williams. You can come for having number two. For you people on Facebook Live, be seeing you. Come for having number two. I think I'm not going to make a second video, but if I do, you'll know. Later. Now, I probably went a little bit too long on this video. But it does have me worried because I really did look up to Tom Brokaw. And the thing with that, you know, is that where do we go when all our idols are becoming assholes? That is what I'm closing out on you with. Later, guys.